That is so fetch. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Kaya and today the salt mines are going to be opened. Uh, yes, today we are doing the top 30 best and worst metal bands that we have listened to on this channel so far it's a ranked video it's uh the first one that we're gonna do we're only doing the very first 30 bands okay from the metal reactions uh series that i've got going on so if you haven't checked out some of these videos there's a playlist it is called reactions um, and all of the metal reactions are in there and they're also numbered one through however many we have. We do have more than 30, but I had to cap it, okay, because we're consistently posting new metal reactions to that series almost every single time I post. So, we have lots of bands to cover. It's going to be so exciting. I also want to let you guys know that at the end of the year, so in January, once 2022 is finished, I will be doing a best metal bands ranked video and a worst metal bands ranked video. So y'all can get excited about that now as we continue our metal journey. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please feel free to do so. We are growing exponentially and I'm honestly just like so excited and so here for it. So y'all are amazing um, and just so supportive. And um, yeah, I would love to have you come and join our metal journey and, um, and just be a part of it, okay? We're a cool community. Also join our Discord, The Mosh Pit. There's an invite link down below in the description. You can join a fun, amazing community if you're looking for friends, if you're looking for peeps, looking for a Discord fam. Come on by, okay? And then um, I also do metal unboxing. So I have a PO box down below in the description. If you want to send something to be featured in a video, you can do so. Without further ado, let's get into the top 30 metal bands we have reacted to on this channel. How this list is going to be ranked is based on overall impact and listenability. So really like my first initial reaction as well as like just the overall listenability of it. Do I see myself um, listening to this band in my free time at all or just with the reactions. I also judge based off lyrics, vocals, productions, overall discography, overall impact. Um, and then in within this, I also am listing out the best song out of the five. Most of these are in five song discography dives. So either I will list the best song out of the five and then the worst of the five. Now there are a few interesting things um, we have two Slipknot reactions. One was a five song discography dive and then one was a full album reaction. I just listed it as a metal reaction. So it's going to count, um, but I've incorporated it in kind of an interesting way in the here. Then I also have um, the Women in Metal video which featured five different artists. Um, so we're gonna kind of treat that as like one artist in a way it makes sense as we continue okay but from it it's definitely made me realize i have to like re do some of this <laughs> layout stuff anyway let's get in to it number 30 coming in at the very bottom of the list our wonderful daddy's mastodon now mm -hmm, mm, girl mastodon let's talk okay oh i did not like mastodon in the slightest bit now my discord told me that they wanted me to be more honest brutally honest give my true opinion so here it is uh mastodon uh i don't like any of their songs uh -huh. i was bored not to tears but almost bored to tears filming this video. Uh, I just don't like any of their music and after listening to like the five, especially the five songs from that um, video, I was bored. Absolutely bored. I think the worst song ever is Hearts Alive. 
I, I could go the rest of my life without ever hearing Hearts Alive or the SAR ever again. It's just droney. I don't like it. I do like some of their harmonies, some of the acoustic stuff, but it's just like, oh god. Ugh. Mm. At least like Electric Wizard doesn't count in this, but at least like Electric Wizard is like just better. It's what I wanted, it's what I expected. Mastodon coming in at the very bottom. Don't like it. <laughs> now I also want to say too that just because these bands are um, either liked or disliked by me, it's purely just judging them off of the songs that I listened to in that specific video. So I will always keep an open mind if there's other songs that y'all think I would like more than just um, those five, then obviously I'm always going to keep an open mind because I always like to give artists multiple chances um, because you can never just judge a band and their full discography and impact and everything just on like five songs you know or even just one album because sometimes that could just be a really crappy album versus like the rest of their discography so I don't have to explain these things but I'm going to explain it anyway coming at 29 right at uh, you know second place for the bottom is chill <laughs> no <laughs> It's not Children of Bono. I, <laughs> it is Whitechapel. Oh, Whitechapel. Whitechapel. Can we talk about this band for a second? This one bored me to tears, I will say. Um, yeah, I didn't like any of the songs from this um, three-song discography dive. I felt like every single one of these songs was so drab, so boring. Um, I do think it's really admirable that the singer, I think his name is Phil, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I do admire that he was like very expressive in his lyrics about kind of the trauma and his, his past and his history, especially with his mom. He had some very meaningful lyrics that he touched on. Um, but I just think overall, it's just not my sound, at least those three songs that we had. I have heard that older Whitechapel is much better, so I'm very, very curious as to what that sound is because their newer stuff's not hitting me very much or at all. Didn't like any of those songs. Coming in at number 28 is Bloody Wood. This is an oldie reaction. This was my Metal Reactions number three. Um, an Indian folk metal group, Bloodywood. I did two songs of these, um, of this band, and they're awful now. I was amazed. I was amazed when I first heard this because I was brand new to the metal journey, and I didn't know anything about, like, new metal or, um, or really just thought that you could mix those two genres, Indian folk music with metal and now that i have like gone through my journey um re-listening to those two songs they just sound very flat very corny very new metal and not like a good new metal sorry not sorry um i have other words to say about some of the new metal bands that we have in our list so i'm gonna save my words for that but i didn't like any of the songs from bloody wood i just don't think that they aged well um from the first listen to now. Taking spot number 27, ooh, some of y'all are gonna really not like this. Pantera, oh, trash, trash. Now, before you come and shank me, okay, I understand that Pantera is like iconic, they are like, they are what they are. They made a huge impact in metal in the 90s and kind of like an interesting transition. It's almost like they were a different, totally different band in the 80s and then in the 90s they made this transition. I just think that I it's either like my age and I'm just not understanding like the impact because it's grunge to me. It's not metal. I am getting, like, honestly, I keep listening to their music and all I'm getting is Rage Against the Machine, Red Hot Chili Peppers, and Nirvana. I'm getting grunge. I'm not getting metal. And it's just drab. It's dreary. It's boring. And I don't have a favorite. And especially the song Floods is just so boring. I can't do it. Now, Phil 
is, you know, talented and the whole dime bag Daryl story, may he rest in peace. It's a tragedy. It's a loss. And um, I recognize that. So historically, for the metal genre, I respect Pantera, but I just cannot get into the Pantani boys. It's not for me. Number 26, we have Imperial Triumphant. This is another oldie but a goodie. Imperial Triumphant Jazz Meets Metal from New York, I believe. Um, if I'm remembering correctly. So they were my second metal band to ever listen to after Cannibal Corpse. Um, I did a three song discography dive on this one. Now I did really, really like the song Chernobyl Blues. I felt that the intro to that song was just like mm, perfection. I felt like I could see like a foggy forest and it was just like mysterious and you had a little bit of like the jazzy trumpets and then they just smack you in the face with these like screams and noise and it's perfection. Atomic Age on the other hand, <sighs> Atomic Age makes me want to jump off a cliff and shave my head at the same time. Like I cannot, I could go the rest of my life without ever hearing that song ever again. It's so boring and it's just not what Chernobyl Blues was for me. Um, Imperial Triumphant as a whole is just kind of boring compared to everything else that I've listened to on the channel. Um, I do like some more symphonic, melodic, death metal, and, and I love all of these different like instruments that you can incorporate into it. I just feel like there's bands that are doing it better and in, in a more interesting style than Imperial Triumphant. That being said, I would totally be down to go and see Imperial Triumphant live because of their whole stage presence and it's jazz meets metal. So I, I'm totally down to see them live, but it's not going to be the first band that I like pick up and listen to in my day to day life. Number 25, we have Rammstein. I think I'm finally saying it right. Rammstein, Rammstein. Um, Yes, Rammstein. Um, industrial metal. I think it's a very interesting sound. And I think overall, I will say I would totally be down to see Rammstein, Rammstein live. For sure, give me a ticket. I'm down, especially because they have a lot of like pyrotechnics in their shows um, and it just seems like a really fun time and a lot of crowd interaction so I'm there totally down to see Romstein live um, but their songs are just <sighs> that's how I feel they're not boring they're kind of catchy and I could see myself like I have more interest in wanting to listen to Romstein than I do Imperial Triumphant or any of the other bands that I've mentioned previously. Like, I think that they have a lot more listenability. I feel like they're a little bit catchier. Um, I think it definitely went over my head and I was a little lost because it was mostly in full German and being just an American Southern woman, you know, it's just something I, I'm not, wasn't used to. That being said, Du Hast, I think, is my favorite song out of the five. I just loved the live recording that I watched, and I loved the crowd reaction, and I think the chorus is very catchy. And listening to this in my car, listening to their music in the car, wasn't a terrible experience. So everything else it was boring and flat. But um, Du Hast. Du Hast has a special place in my heart. <laughs> I'm so hot in this sweatshirt. It's ridiculous. Number 24. I'm going to get shanked for this one, but it is Metallica. Mm, 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 mm. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. It's Metallica because they're boring and I don't like their music very much. Um, Metallica. Here's the tea. Here's the real, here's the real, real, okay? We're diving into more Metallica. Um, because I just want to see what their discography has to offer um, because they are so polarizing. They're such a big band that kind of
catapulted the genre and became more mainstream, made it more mainstream, I guess you could say. Um, but overall, the songs from the five song discography dive, uh, they were rough. The Metallica video was rough. I felt like most of the songs were a bit boring and just lackluster. Um, but I really liked the song Creeping Death. Um, I didn't like the song Injustice for All. I felt like the bass, the story behind the bass is really petty and I don't understand it. I don't get it and I don't respect it. And also, I just feel like, why would you ruin a whole record and the bass, which I think is one of the most important instruments for a record, why would you do that to your own record just to, because you hate somebody? <laughs> because, like, I get it. Like, maybe it's going over my head, but let me just tell you right now, girl, uh-uh, that ain't gonna fly with me, okay? You ain't messing with my bass. So, um, I just don't like that, that aspect for Injustice for All. It's trash. Um... And it's boring. Creeping Death was pretty good. Um, Metallica, I think, is a really great... Um, I See, I missed the whole, like, gateway band thing. I can understand why it would be a gateway band, but I missed that whole thing because I jumped in with Cannibal Corpse. <laughs> so, everything else that we've listened, that I listened to prior to Metallica was more interesting and kept my attention more than Metallica itself. And it's still kind of true now. Um, I have done some other Metallica reactions that are not included in this. Because again, this is from just the top 30 metal reactions. Um, so, and I have my thoughts on those. So make sure you go check out the one reaction I did and the Master of Puppets reaction I did. But overall, I just think Metallica is a solid 5 out of 10. Sorry, not sorry. 23 goes to Gojira, finally saying it right. This French metal band, death metal band, um, they're all right. They're all right. They're kind of mediocre, kind of middle ground for me. I feel like I really, really connected with the song The Art of Dying. Um, it's kind of this beautiful masterpiece, this nice long song that has many chapters and I just feel like I got more of an emotional connection with that song um but I felt like they had a lot of weird songs about weird things like I don't know the, glo the song global warming is just so boring that's my word for this that's my word for this video it's boring it just was not it couldn't hold my attention and um Eh, I just don't feel like I would listen to them at all my day to day. I don't feel like I would go to any of their shows, but I do think they have a lot more listenability than Metallica for sure. Because I feel like I would listen to The Art of Dying by itself more than I would listen to any of the five songs from that Metallica deep dive. Um, so there's the T. Number 22 goes to the band Dimmu Bogir. Um, overall, I did a three song discography dive on this band and I really felt like the strongest song out of that was the Serpentine Offering. Um, that's the only memorable song from this, but honestly it's like still a vague memory. I feel like the other two are okay. I do like that they had a woman in the third song that we listened to, which I don't remember the title of it, but, um... The blonde woman from the live show. I liked that. Um, I thought her voice was okay. I just don't think that I connected with their music as much. And I feel like we've had another symphonic um, death metal band on this list that did it better, honestly. And connected. I connected with more. And they just were more powerful and better. I will say... That being said, I would go see Dimmu Bogir live just because I feel like their whole costume and aesthetic, like stage aesthetic and stage appearance would be a very cool experience. So especially since they had in that one performance their like cloaked choir and orchestra and stuff, I'm sure they don't do that for every show, but you know, you get a choir, you get an orchestra and you play metal, I'm there. 
bar none. Like even if I'm not super crazy about your um, your music. So that's where I'm at with Dimubo gear. Next to 21, I put Iron Maiden on this list. So Iron Maiden is very polarizing. I wish that um, the original video with audio was still up here, but it did finally get blocked and taken down after 52,000 views. So I'll link the Iron Maiden video down in the description. Um, the, it's on my Rumble, so you can still watch the original version um, and see that. But um, that's pretty much, that's, that's pretty much it. Iron Maiden. After some some more listen throughs of the the five songs from that video, I think the Trooper is honestly the weakest song out of those. I think it's the most lackluster, the most boring, and just not strong. And um, a lot of people said that the Trooper was their favorite because I guess it was like the mo it was the most promoted single at the time. Um, and I think there was something else that was like, maybe it was like a movie or something that was like promoted with the Trooper, but, um, eh, I just didn't connect with it. I didn't see why it was everybody's favorite. Um, whereas like Seventh Son and Hollowed Be Thy Name is like, ah, fire. Fire songs by them, great riffs, great vocalist. I think the vocalist for Iron Maiden, I said in the video, reminds me of, um, is it Journey? Just a very strong vocalist. Regardless, super strong vocalist, really great instrumentation. I just feel like a lot of their songs are kind of... Eh, flat, you know? And I feel like I just don't see myself listening to them as much as I would some of the other bands on the list. Number 20, we have Infant Annihilator. It was hard to put Infant Annihilator in a spot. Um, yeah, I did put IA in front of um, in front of Iron Maiden. So Infant Annihilator, I just think, is really, really talented. What I love about this band is that they are so extreme in all aspects of their instrumentation, their music, their music videos, their whole like, I can't even say performances. It was so disappointing to find out that they never like toured or did a live show. They only have like drum videos, you know, videos of the drummer actually doing the songs and stuff like that. It's just, it's just crazy. Such talented musicians and such like goofball musicians. Um, I really liked it. <laughs> I, I really liked it. I felt like their song Swine Ecologist was a banger. There were also a few others um, that I won't mention because YouTube might censor me. But there were a few others in that um, video that I thought were really, really good. Three Bastards I think was the weakest song out of those. I felt also um, my opinion comes from a place of the music video too being so weird, but I think that's also like why I respect Infant Annihilator for, Infant Annihilator for what they are. Is they're kind of like, you know, just a fun death metal band or death core band that does just extreme everything, <laughs> but they're so talented. So I honestly don't see myself listening to Infinite Annihilator as much um, as I would some of these others, but I think that they're just, I, I like the story, I like their music a little bit better than I do any of the others previously mentioned. Next up, at number 19, we have Lorna Shore. So Lorna Shore is, um, I did the entire EP and I returned to nothingness, um, which was honestly pretty dope. Here are my thoughts on Lorna Shore, okay? Um, I think that Will Ramos is honestly carrying the entire band of Lorna Shore on his shoulders. I've said multiple times on my channel that Will Ramos is one of the most promising metal vocalists in in the game right now. And he's young, he's talented, and he has such a career 
on his shoulders and he can do so much and so I'm really really looking forward to seeing how he grows because I think as a vocalist he's just phenomenal and you can't deny that you cannot deny that <laughs> Will Ramos has amazing cleans his gutturals are insane his goblin screams are insane um, but you take away Will Ramos and Lorna Shore kind of just falls a little flat honestly um, I feel like all of their songs kind of sound the same. Kind of sound the same. Not gonna lie. They kind of sound the same. Um, and they all have sort of the same layout. Um, but this EP specifically, To the Hellfire, I think was the strongest um, single, especially with the like acoustic guitar kind of instrumental leading you into the EP. I was really disappointed with the title track from this EP and I returned to nothingness. I felt like it was just lackluster, not a great closer for the EP. Um, but I really like Lorna Shore's big sound. I still haven't heard any like or watched any live performance videos of their sound. Hope that they would incorporate some of the choirs and vocal sounds and stuff like that into their live performances somehow. Um, but again, I think Will Ramos is just carrying Lauren Shore on his back right now. Um, but I know that they're coming out with a new album in October, so I'm very excited to hear it um, because this is going to be the first one with Will Ramos. So um, I also don't know what situation I would actually listen to um, Lorna Shore, but I feel like I would do it like sunbathing. I don't know, extreme sunbathing edition. <laughs> All right, coming in at number 18, I put this as Slipknot number two. So this is basically the five song discography dive that I did on Slipknot. Yes, this was the five song discography dive I did because remember I did their full Iowa album because I totally missed that record. <laughs> but um, I really liked the song Pulse of the Maggots. I feel like that was the strongest one. I can still like sing along Pulse of the Maggots. Like, I don't know, just super catchy. Really loved that song. Unsainted, I felt was like the weakest one um, out of those five. The choir at the beginning bothers me to no end because it reminds me of You Can't Always Get What You Want by the Rolling Stones. The choir in the beginning of that song. And I, ooh, ooh, the choir at the beginning of You Can't, You Don't Always Get What You Want is just, mm, it's trash. It's not good. Um, it just sounds like the most flattest keyboard that you could find at Goodwill ever. Um, so that's, that's my thoughts. Slipknot as a whole. I really like Slipknot. I'm gonna just say it. I think they're guilty pleasure. I think they're one of the most iconic and polarizing new metal bands to come out of the late 90s. You can't deny that Slipknot is one of those bands that just took the metal genre and just, just created something totally different and they were one of the pioneers. And I also really, really love that they are a nine piece band. I've said it multiple times on the channel, but you do not see that a lot at all in, in mainstream bands. And I feel like you definitely don't see that with a lot of like metal bands. Um, but it's just cool that they have two percussionists and to hear that they have like beer, like beer kegs that they bang on stage and their keyboardist just never plays keys. He's always just doing this, <laughs> just having a blast. But they seem like they would be so fun live. All of their songs are just catchy, teenage, angsty, just like throwback songs. And it's just fun. And it's all around fun. And um, that's why I put them at number 18 because I feel like they are very polarizing. But as you figured out now, I think Iowa, the full album, is stronger than the five songs that we listen to in this deep dive. So number 17 is actually going to go to Korn, the Corny Boys. So 
Corn, I think, is they're in the same field as Slipknot. They they came around the same time. They're kind of this new metal band. Corn. They're both very commercial, but I feel like Corn is a little bit more commercial than Slipknot. Um, but ooh, I love the song Twist. That is just the scat that he does throughout that whole song is just mmm it's fire I really really love it I think that their whole vibe is very like it's just very 90s I don't know I get like such a grungy just ang again teenage angsty vibe I feel like they would be it's just fun to sing along to their songs in the car and I think that like they are a polarizing band that a lot of like teenagers in the 90s like just that's like kind of what got them into punk and stuff like that and more into like deathcore and metalcore and stuff like that. It's kind of like, I, maybe I'm wrong about that, but I don't know. I think corn is fun. It's a guilty pleasure. Same with Slipknot. This sweater is so hot. I don't know why I wore this sweater. I'm changing. You're welcome. Okay, I changed, sorry. You're just gonna have to deal with me being in a crop top because I'm freaking hot, girl, okay? And also sweaty. Hey. <laughs> okay, coming in at number 16, we have the band Lamb of God. Okay, so Lamb of God is also a guilty pleasure. Um, I feel like their songs, after spending some time with them, they're very catchy. Um, they're not so much teenage angst. It's kind of like young adult angst, <laughs> but I really like some of their, they, they have really great breakdowns, really good, um, I don't know, good breakdowns, good catchy choruses, and I think that I, this band is definitely one that I think would be just so incredibly fun to see live. So do I think they're my favorite out of this? No, I think they're kind of like a solid like 6 or 7 out of 10, but I do think that I, I would listen to them a lot more um, than I would even Corn. Like, I feel like Lamb of God I would listen to a lot more than Corn. 15 is finally going to be Slipknot's Iowa album reaction. I think that this overall was more polarizing and better than any of the five songs that we did in the discography dive this whole album I Iowa is insane um the backstory of it is so sad and <laughs> traumatic and it's just there's so much pain I just remember there being so much pain and so much like just sorrow and anger and it's just Mm. So, as far as like my favorite songs, definitely the title track, Iowa, which I believe, if I remember correctly, is, is like 15 minutes long or something like that. It just takes you on a journey. I remember this entire album making me feel like I was in some like Mad Max desert scene, um, which I guess is very fitting for Iowa because there's nothing out there, but um, <laughs> sorry if you live in Iowa. You know? You know? Girl, what do you got there? Tell me. Number 14 goes to the iconic band Slayer. Uh, I don't think Slayer grabbed me as much as I wanted it to. That being said, um, I had an epiphany in this video where I was like, yo, I understand the impact of Slayer. Like, I think the band Death created, like, death metal, but Slayer, I think, created death metal, honestly. Like, I think that Slayer just started something very special, and, and they, took, they took metal, and they started, like, incorporating a lot more, like, scary, spooky, like, dark things into it from their branding to their stage presence and their whole stage aura to their lyrics to everything slayer was just doing it in such a different way than metallica was at the time and it's like yes that's that's that you know 
which Metallica is like old school thrash, where Slayer I feel like is definitely old school um, death metal in a different way than Black Sabbath is, because Black Sabbath is is kind of a different generation to be honest it started in the 70s whereas like slayer really took off in the 80s so it's like it's it's not but it is it feels different um south of heaven i think in south of heaven into silent scream was definitely my favorite um combo um just being able to transition into both of those songs i think was beautiful i love when bands do that and i think it's my favorite all-time favorite thing um to hear in a record at dawn they sleep i thought was the most snooze worthy song i've ever even like the live performance was awful um and just boring and there's not much going on on stage at least for that one performance so i felt like that song was really flat for me number 13 uh, i am putting the women in metal video now this one um it's funky because we do have where are you on my list it's funky because we have five different bands in this video that were featured but i put them at number 13 because i think that overall the there were more artists that i would listen to more often than the ones previously mentioned i think absolutely the best artist from this were Arch Enemy and Spirit Box. I really, really liked Ginger as well. Tatiana, my love. Mmm. Ah. Uh, Courtney. Ah. Uh, Ariana Femme vibes. Love it. But really, the woman who stole my heart was Angela from Arch Enemy. So she's nuts. Crazy. And, um, yeah, she's basically in a league of her own. She can, uh, fight with the boys, and I love that. She's not afraid, and, like, her voice is just absolutely insane. And I've ne I was completely blown away, and still am blown away, that a woman can make that sound come out of her. I just had no idea. I was totally mind-blown that that was even possible. Um, absolutely the worst, worst song out of those five was Nightwish. For sure. Now, I've heard many of y'all say that Floor is definitely the better singer of Nightwish, so I still need to check that out. Um, but, yeah, the song oh, Bye Bye Beautiful is trash. Awful. Mm, not good. Um, and Black Briar I was alright with. I was really bored with that song, to be honest. Really, really bored. There was nothing going on in that song that was keeping me. Um, but I do think that she has a very cool look, and I think her voice is really beautiful. I just felt like it was super boring and flat, but it was also a really good example of a metal song having straight cleans instead of being, like, screaming and then cleans or you know, goblin gutter rolls and stuff like that. Like, it just opened up a new realm of like, okay, to make a metal song, you don't have to have all of these like crazy vocals and stuff like that. Well, we have the band Children of Bodom. I think, here are my thoughts on Children of Bodom, okay? I think that Children of Bodom has a lot more listening potential than any of the bands uh, mentioned previously um, because they just have, a, I don't know, I really, really liked the lyrics and I really liked the backstory of Alexi I, and, and the fact that he just died is like so heartbreaking, but I, I like the sound. As I've been like listening to it more, it's, it's starting to grow on me, but overall I cannot put them any higher than 12 because the keyboard, the keyboard, I can't. It's just, it's the cheesiest, corniest, most interesting sound. I just, I don't connect with it. It sounds, it sounds like a really bad, cheap keyboard that you would get from like Goodwill. And that's like what he's doing all of that stuff on. 
But I definitely think that they're my favorite songs from that reaction were Mask of Sanity and All for Nothing. Um, but I really didn't like any of the other songs. I just thought that they were a bit boring. Um, but for the history, the backstory of Children of Bodom, there's a lot of sad things <laughs> with some of these bands. But I think that Children of Bodom has a lot more listening potential and... Um, I'm more interested in going back through and listening to their discography more than some of these other bands um, because of the backstory as well as just the instrumentation overall. Number 11, we have Russian metal band Slaughter to Prevail. Oh, uh, with Alex to the Hot Daddy. So Slaughter to Prevail, let's talk. Deathcore, very catchy. I think Demolisher is like one of the bops and a half that I listen to. Same with Baba Yaga. It's just like the beginning of that song. Flesh we ate. Mana, mana, la. Like, mm, mm. It's great. I think his lows are really great. I think it's just another guilty pleasure, kind of like poppy metal. It's got everything that you would want super fast drums some like deep breakdowns. I feel like they would be super fun to um, go and see live. And I just think that they're, they're a guilty pleasure, you know? I look at like Korn and Slipknot, like I do Miley Cyrus and Hannah Montana, who were like, she was my pop star growing up. And like, I, I see myself listening to Korn and Slipknot like that where I feel like Slaughter to Prevail, mm, they're not like Ariana, but they're like the Dua Lipa album that I listened to, the, re the most recent one that she did. I might be a little bloated from dinner, just a little bit. You wanna see me flex? Look at that, look at that. Look at those ab lines, look at that ab line, girl! Mm, mm. Okay, great, I won't flex anymore for you. Coming out at number 10, we have Sepultura. I think I'm saying that right now. Sepultria, Sepultria, something like that. Um, Brazilian metal. I will say, they had such a switch in their genre, okay? Because they started out as like really great thrash, death metal, um, and then they transitioned into new metal and then it almost seems like they got worse <laughs> and I like stopped I like caught all of their songs right before they really fell off as a lot of people have said um but I think their most iconic song my favorite song from them is absolutely Roots Bloody Roots and the reason being is like the the traditional Brazilian drums that they have on that song are just perfection it's it's literally perfection. I'm a big drum lover. I love percussions um, in music and I think Roots Bloody Roots, they just they just did a really, really great job of paying homage to their home country as well as like having this really catchy new metal song. Um, a lot of people don't like this album, but I feel like this song is just a guilty pleasure. Again, it's really fun. It's really, really catchy. Roots! Bloody Roots! I don't know, it's bouncy, it's good, I like it, it's in my car, it's fireball nasty. Um, Arise, I think, is their weakest one. I just don't even... I remember watching the music video and being bored to tears, almost. It's just like, ugh. Coming in at number 9, we're now in our top 10 here. Number 9, I am giving to Dying Fetus. Oh, my burpee boys. So, Dying Fetus, I really, really enjoyed. This was quite a trip of a um, band to listen to um, because they're just a trio. They were mostly a trio throughout their whole career, with the exception of maybe adding one or two people for an album or a stage, like a show. Um, but overall, they were mostly a trio, and I feel like their sound... They did so much with just three people that it was just crazy. Um, I feel like their more um, earlier stuff was too burpy for me and just kind of funny and not something that I like really could connect with. 
which somebody said that that's pretty common when you first start listening to dying fetus is that you just have to kind of get past it <laughs> and then you get used to it. So Grotesque Impalement was the worst song out of this. I felt like it was way too burpy for me to even like take seriously, which I did mention in that video. Um, but Subjected to a Beating I think is a bop and a half. Um, Rain in Blood, I think is what this album is off of, and I just, I love the album art, I love the whole vibe of the record, I love Subjected to a Beating, it's just, it's just something you can sing along to, tap your foot to, I think it's great for the summer, windows down, driving in your car, Dying Fetus is classic. Number eight, this was hard, this was hard to pick my top ten, but I'm giving number eight to Opeth. I know y'all have been wanting a still life reaction and she's she's on the list. It's honestly hard to do full album reactions sometimes, um, but I am going to do a sit down to still life. Um, Opeth, this is my first, they were my first experience into like symphonic, is it symphonic, are they symphonic death metal? What is Opeth? Let's just quickly Google. They are progressive metal rock band. Wow, so they don't even have anything. Progressive rock, death metal, doom metal, technical death metal. There's so much more than that though. They're very like melodic and just beautiful. And this entire album that I did, Blackwater Park, was just emotional. <laughs> it was emotional. The entire thing was just quite an experience. Um, Blackwater Park is a perfect album. I don't think that there are really any skips to it. There's so many different things that they like touch on. A lot of things about death and like turmoil and heartache and just beautiful instrumentation. And it's a very like emotional, sad album that you would put on um, on a, like a rainy day or a winter's day. Um, I think Dirge for November and Patterns in the Ivy are my absolute favorites off of this record because of the acoustic instrumentation that they have. Um, but I just really think that Opeth is just, they're, they're very unique in their sound. And I think that, um, an Abstract Illusion, who is an underground band that we've covered on this channel, takes a lot of inspiration from Opeth but they do it in definitely a, a their own original way. So I really, really like Opeth, um, and I think that they're like my sad girl music, you know? Number seven is going to go to the wonderful band, Epica. So where uh, Demu Borgir lacked, Epica did not. I think Epica outshines Demu Bogir in so many different ways. I think Epica is literally, mmm, it is everything that I want and more when it comes to cinematic metal. <laughs> That's basically what it is. You've got a beautiful vocalist who reminds me so much of Florence and the Machine. I mentioned that in that video, but it's just like you have beautiful vocals, choir, you have another male vocalist, you have just all different kinds of like guitars and just, I don't know, strings, it's medieval, it's cinematic, I could see it in like a TV show, I could see it in a video game, like there's just so many different things, not to mention the fact that their whole like stage show everything is just wild. I think Epica definitely definitely took me on a journey and I would love 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 to see them live. Um, I think Phantom Agony from their um, first record is a banger and Kingdom Heaven number three is like mm. number six is going to who I think is one of the best um, thrash daddies out of the list of eight and that is going to be Megadeth. I think Megadeth is the strongest band um, bar none. I think they're better than Metallica. I think they're better than Slayer. I haven't listened to Creator or Testament yet um, or Anthrax so I don't know what I there's I have no words on that but so far Megadeth takes the cake for me. Um, it was really, really, really hard for me to choose a, a song that I disliked off of 
Rust in Peace. So in this video, I did the entire Rust in Peace album, um, which was quite an experience. Um, just perfect. Perfection. Perfect 80s thrash. And um, everything from the vocals to just talking about aliens to serial killers to... I think they talked about war and there's just like... I just, I just remember so many different guitars and just, I don't know, it was just a, a wild experience. I think Lucretia might be my, like, the only song that I was like, meh, but it's still like a 7, 8 out of 10. Alright, we're down to our top 5. Have you guessed who it is yet? Have you? <laughs> Number 5 is going to go to Morbid Angel. This is another oldie but a goodie. Morbid Angel, I think, is just one of those bands that I definitely listen to a lot more frequently than I thought I would. Um, it's just perfect death metal, honestly. And I think that not only is the vocals really good, I really just liked the vibe of it. I loved all of their like wild album covers. And I just remember... like. I remember when I did the reaction, I was like, eh, I don't know if I like Morbid Angel upon first impression, but I put the more of their songs on as I was just like doing chores and, you know, driving, and I really, really liked the songs Fall From Grace and Desolate Ways. God of Emptiness, I think, is the only weak song out of those five. Um, a lot of y'all said it was, it's an interesting song because it was one of the first, like, slow sort of metal ballads that they create that they like released at the time which I can definitely see being very interesting and why people would really like it and I think that's one of the reasons why I'm a little on the fence about it because it's like it's catchy but I feel like it's kind of missing the mark for me but I also understand like the importance of it. Number four <laughs> I am putting Black Sabbath at number four. Now, Black Sabbath doesn't really need an introduction. Um, I'm just going to say that Heaven and Hell is my absolute favorite, favorite song by Black, by Black Sabbath. It's my favorite song. Um, and I think it's one of the most iconic... Yeah, actually I'm going to be very firm on that. I think Heaven and Hell is the best uh, metal song that has ever been written and ever been recorded. And I will stand by that. I think Heaven and Hell is just per... Perfection. It's a beautiful song. It's great and Dio has an amazing voice. I think Ozzy Osbourne um, also did a really amazing job in the early years of Black Sabbath, but you know, they had to replace him. Mm, that's what happens sometimes, girl. Snowblind I think is absolutely atrociously just awful. Um, <laughs> at least that live recording of it was just so boring and so slow and just like not not interested um, but I really really love the impact that Black Sabbath had because like I mentioned earlier they started in the 70s so they really were planting the seeds of this kind of like harder style of rock and starting to plant the seeds of this metal where Slayer then I feel like came in and was like oh like what Black Sabbath is doing but let's take it to a little bit more of an extreme Root. So my top three pick is going to go to Cannibal Corpse, The Daddies, what started it all. Cannibal Corpse, I am so excited. I'm actually going to go to a Cannibal Corpse show in November and I'm going to take y'all with me so you better be prepared. Um, <laughs> but I put them at number three because not only is it sentimental for me because they were the first band I metal band I'd ever listened to, um, but everything from their album covers to their lyrics to the instrumentation is just extreme, but like taken seriously. So whereas Infant Annihilator is more like joking, let's have fun, kind of meme sort of thing, it's like Hannibal Corpse is just like nope, this is our brand, this is what we do, and everybody thinks it's dope. So, um, Asphyxiate to Resuscitate was my one of my favorite songs. It was really, really hard to pick a dislike, because honestly, all of these songs are, like, bangers, and that's what I love, is that they're just 
extreme. There's some really great burpy vocals. I feel like I like Cannibal Corpse just a, a little bit more than Dying Fetus because I think Cannibal Corpse is just a little bit more extreme. I like the extreme stuff. I don't know. I think Loved with a Knife, censoring it for YouTube, Loved with a Knife is I, I think the only, like, it's not even weak. It's just not, see, I don't really have a dislike, but that's the one I'm putting at the bottom, Loved with a Knife. Number two is going to be Carcass. I know, carcass. Um, so we recently just did this. This was actually our 30th metal reaction. Um, carcass, I think, is absolutely phenomenal. I think this band is by far one of the most iconic death metal bands I've ever come across and had the pleasure of listening to. Um, I think it's really funny that they're vegans and they talk about all of this like, I don't know, just like brutal stuff and that they have like vegetables and all this like weird surgical stuff that's like on their album covers, but it's just, it's so much more than that and it's the technicality and the time that they spent recording the record. It's how much effort and time they spent actually, like, combing through the entire song and making sure that, like, every piece, every single note had a, was in the correct place and had a, had a place and had a meaning. And that's what you can hear in, in most of the songs, all of the songs, that um, were in this video. And I just, I really enjoyed this entire record. And it's like every single time I caught a transition, it was like something else was already happening and then something else was already happening and it's like I couldn't keep up. Heartwork, I think, is absolutely my favorite song out of these five. Forensic Cynicism, Clinicism, I think, is the only song that I was like, mm, a little on the fence about. But I'm listening to a lot more Carcass now. And I have some cassette tapes from one of my lovely subscribers, Russ. Shout out to you. Um... And I just, I, I think they're very enjoyable and I think that they have a lot to offer in terms of their discography. All right, so you probably know who our number one choice is by now if you've been watching me for a minute. It of course is going to the Death Daddies who are Death. <laughs> um, I couldn't not give it to Death, okay? It had to be Death because, um, because Chuck, okay? Another sad death in the metal community. May you be resting in peace, Mr. Chuck. Um, but Death is one of the most iconic metal bands to ever exist. And um, it's my favorite. So the reaction to Death changed my life forever. I will say that. Voice of the Soul and Flesh and the Power It Holds are easily my favorite songs ever ever and i'm saying like ever like they're competing with ariana grande okay <laughs> like voice of the soul especially is just one of the most beautiful songs i've ever heard in my life um and i was not expecting or prepared at all for me to enjoy death as much as i do the entire album sound of perseverance is absolute perfection the one thing i love about death is that they just dedicate like you can just tell that every single note every single instrument has a place it has a meaning it's there for a reason super technical super beautiful love everything about it the only song that i felt like was the weakest out of this was moment of clarity um, but Death is definitely a powerhouse of a band, and I listen to it the most frequently out of all of these um, artists. Um, so, yeah, that's going to do it <laughs> for our list. <laughs> so, I hope that you enjoyed today's video. I really had a fun time listing out these bands and ranking them for y'all. 
Let me know in the comments down below what you thought about today's rank. If you agree, if you disagree, um, if you hate me, if you love me. I don't, you know. The thing is, is that we all have our own opinions and you can be sensitive about music, but girl, people aren't going to like what you like and I'm certainly not going to love everything that you love. So, you know, as long as you're respectful, we're fine. Um, but I, yeah, had so much fun creating this list and I had so much fun being able to like throw back and go through this whole journey. We've done so many bands and we're continuing to do more. So definitely if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you absolutely should. So you never miss a video. So you're always in the loop of this metal journey because we're always doing stuff. So um also i don't know what that dance move was by the way i don't i don't know her um <laughs> uh join the discord the mosh pit there's in my link down below and then you can also send me something to be featured in an unboxing video there's a p.o box link um yeah let me know what your thoughts are and uh i will see you in the next video i love you so much bye guys